Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lena, uh, for those of you who are new here. So I am a writer, I'm an author, and I am a speaker. Uh, for those of you guys who are coming back to my channel, thank you so much for listening to that every single time. <laughs> I think I mentioned that in the last video. Uh, so again, I'm a writer, I'm an author, and I am a speaker. Uh, I guess you could say I would also consider myself um, a student. Well, no, I'm not going to say that. A student of Neville Goddard. Um, so last year I experienced and I went through an awakening. And it was after discovering Neville Goddard. Um, and just uh, what I read the, in his books and um, his lectures, it just, like the first time I read the, I think it was Power of Awareness, it just resonated with me. And again, I mentioned this in the last video. But uh, I, you know, I'm curious about something. And it has to do with states of consciousness in the Bible, uh, or states of consciousness and how it relates to the genealogy in the Bible, right? Because Neville said that uh, based on his experiences, his mystical dreams, his visions, and uh, his ex his experience, I guess, awakening, I guess you could say, and um, receiving the promise. He t so he talks about how Every character in the Bible is a state of consciousness. Okay, so when, um, so Adam, when Adam was put to sleep, he never woke up. So the scriptures, basically, um, dreams and visions and stuff like that. So anyway, I was reading the Bible one day. I was going through the genealogy. I think of Genesis and then in Chronicles. And there was there was something that struck me. So generally the Bible, the genealogy says so and so um, lived so many years and they begat so and so and they lived so many years and they begat so and so or so and so had sons and daughters, they lived for so many years, blah blah blah. There was one there was one point in scripture where it just hit me oh this is when this this state um no i don't know how to read i don't know how to phrase it i could be wrong but there was one point in scripture where i was reading through the the genealogy and i was like this is when this individual had gone through like all of the, uh, they had to finally awoken, right? It just hit me and it could be wrong because again, uh, like I'm not, like I'm not an expert on this stuff, but it just hit me. I'm like, it makes sense that... It makes sense to me that the different characters in the Bible are just states of consciousness, right? Because and Neville states this and Blake stated this. Um, I think Blake stated this, how uh, so we basically in this physical body, right? And when we die, we are we're basically um, born again into the same body, just younger, right? Um, and we continue on until we finally awake. So we go through different states of consciousness. Um, we die in this body and then um, we are basically um, born again, same body, younger, just different point in time so we can continue our journey to awaken. And it could be thousands of years. I forget how many years Blake said that he had, that 
how many years that he had actually lived um, in various states until he awakened. I know it sounds, if you're not familiar with Neville, if you're not familiar with Blake, I realize this would sound kind of crazy. Um, if you are familiar and you have some insight, I would love your, your comments. Um, anyway, so I was trying to find the, I was trying to find the verse in the genealogy today. Um, the one that really kind of struck me and I was like, oh yeah, the characters are states of consciousness. Uh, so I'm going to read, where am I at now? I think, oh, I'm in Genesis. So I was just looking up Genesis and, uh, okay. So I'm at the point, the point where it says from Shem to Abram, uh, two years after the flood, when Shem was a hundred years old, he became the father of our faxed and he became the father. And after he became the father of our faxed, Shem lived 500 years and had other sons and daughters. So I'm wondering how that, like, as far as states of consciousness go. So two years after the flood, Shem was a hundred, he was a hundred years old. And he became the father of our faxed. So is it reasonable to assume that our facts, our facts ad is a state of consciousness? Now, what state that character represented? I don't know. It doesn't state in the Bible. Um, and after he became the father of that basically bore that state of consciousness. He lived 500 years and had other sons and daughters. So did he live, did, did he, so did he embody that particular state of consciousness for like a f another 500 years? And while he embodied that state of consciousness, had other sons and daughters. So, uh, there were other states of consciousness that he embodied as well within that. So there's a primary state of consciousness that we um, habitually kind of fall back into, right? The, which is natural to us. But at any given moment, we can embody other states of consciousness. Okay. Uh, so if you are wealthy, if you believe you're wealthy, that's a state of consciousness of being wealthy, right? But uh, at the same time you're wealthy, you could um, you could be in the state of consciousness of being healthy or unhealthy, right? Or being um, a great parent or uh, a not so great parent or um, a good friend or bad friend. You know what I'm saying? Like everything is pretty much a state. So... Is that what is happening in the genealogy? I've been try, I've been trying to make sense of it off and on. I mean, it makes sense to me, even though each of the different characters are not, there's what state they represent is not identified, but there are like thousands, I mean, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of different states of consciousness that we can embody, correct? So, that is okay. So, and the fa and after uh, he Shem became the father of our Faxad, Shem lived five hundred years and had other sons and daughters. So, the way I read it is that Shem was a state of consciousness. Ah, my monitor went <laughs> went off. So Shem was a particular state of consciousness. Okay that he embodied for a hundred years, that which is a natural state of consciousness that he embodied for a um, hundred years. So Adam was dreaming this, right? Uh, uh, so, he, and then he became the father of Arphaxad, which was another state of consciousness. And he remained 
that in that state of that state of consciousness was embodied for 500 years and then he embodied states of consciousness other states of consciousness within that primary state does that make sense um when our fact said had lived 35 years he became the father of shayla and after he became the father of shayla our fact said lived 403 years and had other sons and daughters does that sound reasonable um given like the the number of years it states that certain people uh characters lived in the bible that essentially those were primary states of consciousness and then the sons and daughters were were other states of consciousness that were embodied while in this primary state i think the thing the thing that got that I think the thing that really gets me in the Bible is that certain points they go through the genealogy so and so begat so and so and had sons and daughters they lived for so many years and then they died. So what I get out of that is that they finally finally die to that state and they embody a new state of consciousness which becomes their primary state of consciousness i know this sounds crazy i'm trying to figure this out um to where uh to where it makes sense whether it will ever make sense i don't know but uh yeah so I mean, I've been I've been thinking about this since last year, maybe not last year, earlier this year, um, to kind of correlate with what Neville says about the characters in the Bible being states of consciousness, and how we live so like we live so many years embodying different states of consciousness until. Until we actually um, are chosen and and um, incorporated into the one body, right? So we receive the promise, and then um, and then after you know a set amount of time, I, I should I need to go back and read Neville's lectures, but it's stated in there because he experienced it, um, and then after. Uh, a period of time then uh, we encounter David right and we are incorporated into the one body I know I'm probably not getting this 100% correct but you can always go read Neville's lectures uh, I guess my point of even putting this up is because this is something I'm really curious about these characters of the Bible the number of years that they lived, and um, how it relates to states of consciousness and what Neville talks about. So, before I ramble anymore, if, you, if you've been curious about this or if you have studied it as well, I would absolutely love to hear your comments. And again, I apologize for rambling. It's just, it's very... Like on one hand, like I totally get it. Maybe not totally. I kind of get it. Because there's something that's like, yeah, this makes sense. But on the other hand, it's so, like it seems so far out there, right? Um, because of the way we've been taught the Bible. And the fact that the characters were real people. 
So it's interesting. But anyway, that's it. <laughs> I just, I've been wanting to talk about this for a while. And uh, I was hoping I could find the one, the one verse that really kind of got me interested in this. But uh, I'll go back and read my Bible. And then if I find it and something else kind of pops up, then uh, to talk about, then I'll probably do another video. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for now. And I uh, hope to see you guys back in the next video. All right. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and leave a comment. I'd love, 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 love to hear what you have to say. All right. Bye.